Hey everybody, I'm Jess and today I'm going to show you how to make Lauren, which is a functional and sophisticated satchel pattern. I designed this bag so it's simple to make but features luxury elements for a high-end look. This glamorous pattern is a medium-sized bag and is equipped with a convenient exterior zipper pocket, interior slip pockets, and comfortable shoulder straps which can be adjusted so you can carry this bag crossbody or over the shoulder. The name and design of this pattern was inspired by Lauren Bacall, who was named the 20th greatest female star of classic Hollywood cinema. Her style was simple and tailored, and I tried to incorporate some of her favorite fashion elements into this bag's design. If you love hardware, this bag is for you. The eye-catching side straps are adorned with rivets or Chicago screws, and you can clip on a tassel for additional flair. The entire bag can be made from faux leather or cork fabric on your home sewing machine. Or, if you prefer, I've included instructions for cotton and canvas fabrics too, so you can feature your treasured prints. The instructions include tips for reducing bulk and a unique construction method that will finish off your bag just right without any binding or a drop in lining. Be sure to purchase the pattern before taking this class. The pattern and your supplies can be purchased from our website or request them at your local fabric shop. Please remember to shop local whenever you can. I will be your instructor for this class and step by step I'll show you how to attach your interfacing and stabilizer, add a shape to your bag, attach an accented zipper pocket, attach an interior slip pocket, attach unique side strap connectors featuring luxury hardware elements, add a top zipper closure, final assembly, create an adjustable strap, add decorative zipper pulls, and an optional tassel using hardware. The entire project was designed as beginner friendly as possible and don't worry, I'll be here to guide you through the process. I'm sure you're eager to get started, so let's start by gathering your materials and supplies. Before beginning, review the recommended fabrics on the back of the pattern cover. Also, please visit the pattern corrections page on our website for any updates. Cut out the pieces listed in the pattern to create this bag. It may be helpful to label your pieces as you cut them by marking the name of each piece on the wrong side with a removable pen or chalk. After your cutting is complete, let's get started on the construction of this luxury bag. Center and fuse interfacing to the wrong side of coordinating main fabric pieces A and B. I'm using a wool pressing mat and a Liso Mini Project Iron. This 100% wool pressing mat absorbs steam, essentially pressing both sides at once. These are very convenient to keep close to your sewing machine or even in your bedroom to give clothes a quick press. They're also very handy for travel. You can find these on our website or request them at your local fabric shop. With right sides up, position each main fabric piece A over one fleece or foam piece A, aligning all edges. You can use basting spray to hold the layers together while sewing. If you use spray, be sure to spray in a ventilated area. I prefer Selkie KK2000 spray since it doesn't gum up your needle. Otherwise, you can hold the layers together with sewing clips, such as Wonder Clips. I'm going to be working on a Baby Lock Accomplish. I love this machine for all sewing purposes. It can handle sewing through thicker projects while maintaining a quality stitch. However, this pattern can be sewn on any home sewing machine. Baste an eighth inch from each edge. You can attach a Teflon foot or a walking foot to your machine to help prevent the fabric from shifting. If you don't have either of those feet, your machine might have the ability to adjust the presser foot pressure so your foot doesn't press down hard on your fabric, causing it to shift. Repeat the same process to attach each main fabric piece B to one fleece or foam piece B, and for your contrast piece F to fleece or foam piece F. Also, now is the time to add any embroidery, applique, quilting, or other embellishments to each main fabric piece A using your desired method. Keep in mind that the zipper pocket will be attached to one piece A, so reference that section of instructions for placement to avoid any overlap. 
Position the circle template found in your pattern in each bottom corner of one main fabric piece A main panel. Trace the outer edge of the template from edge to edge, cut along the marked line to round each corner. Then you repeat for the remaining piece A for the main fabric and the lining piece A. To attach the zipper pocket, you can follow the pattern instructions or visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on how to install a zipper pocket using the respective pattern pieces and measurements according to the Lauren pattern. I recommend using Sally Tomato Zippers by the Yard for all the zippers throughout this project. They have a nylon coil with a metallic finish so you can easily cut and sew over the zipper while achieving the professional appearance of metal teeth. Next, you'll make and attach the slip pocket. You can follow the pattern instructions and visit our YouTube channel for a video tutorial on how to install a slip pocket using the respective pattern pieces and measurements according to the Lauren pattern. After constructing your slip pocket, with right sides up, center the slip pocket down from the top edge of one lining piece A according to your pattern. Pin in place. Top stitch an eighth inch from the sides and bottom edge also, if you'd like, you can top stitch a centered vertical line to divide the pocket into two compartments. If desired, install a metal handmade label centered down from the top edge of one lining piece A according to the pattern. This will add a professional touch and a surprise when you open up your bag. Mark one inch in from each side along the top short edge of each main fabric piece B side gusset according to the pattern. Also mark up from each short bottom edge according to the pattern. Then draw a diagonal line between each mark. Sew an eighth inch in from the diagonal lines. After sewing, cut along the diagonal lines to add shape to each side gusset. Then you'll repeat the same process to shape the lining piece B side gussets omitting the stitching. With wrong sides together, fold each contrast piece D strap connector A in half. Top stitch each link side with an eighth inch seam allowance. Thread each end of one piece D through an O-ring, folding the ends of piece D one inch to the underside. Top stitch ends of piece D to itself about a quarter inch from the ends, making sure to back stitch. Repeat for the remaining piece D and two O-rings. A narrow foot or zipper foot will help stitch close to the hardware. Thread one contrast piece E strap connector B through one O-ring that's already attached to piece D and fold the end of piece E to the underside. Use basting tape or sewing clips to hold the fold in place. Repeat for the remaining piece E and D. Apply basting tape to the center underside of each prepared strap connector unit. With right sides up, center one strap connector over each main fabric side gusset, aligning the short raw edge of piece E along the wide bottom edge of the gusset. Make sure that the top edge of piece D is positioned according to the pattern. The lower O-ring should be somewhat loose not tight to leave space for when items are inside your bag. Top stitch piece D along previous link side stitching and across the strap about a half inch from the previous stitching. Top stitch piece E an eighth inch from the side edges and about five eighths inch from the folded edge. Then repeat for the remaining strap connector unit and gusset piece. This step is optional. You can install two small Chicago screws or rivets in piece D between the across strap stitching. Also, you can install one Chicago screw or rivet in piece E below the strap stitching. If you want to use rivets, be sure to check out our helpful tutorial on YouTube on how to install them or follow your manufacturer's instructions. If you want to use Chicago screws, I'll show you how easy they are to install. 
Chicago screws are great to have on hand for accenting and reinforcing straps, handles, corners, and thick areas on projects. The best part about this hardware is how durable it is and it doesn't require any setting tools. Each Chicago screw has a receiver unit and a flat top and a screw unit which you can see has a threaded post. To install this hardware, you might want to use some scraps of fleece, foam, or other stabilizer to add support on areas where the hardware may be more loose. A rotary punch is also very helpful for punching the holes for the screws, and you'll also need a screwdriver. If you're using a rotary punch, you'll first start by selecting the appropriate punch size. Align the receiver unit to each punch and select a punch that is the same size or a size smaller than the post. You want a tight fit so the hardware doesn't pull through. Then punch or cut the holes in your desired areas. Also punch or cut holes through some of your stabilizer or scraps so they're ready in case you need them. Next, simply insert the receiver unit through a hole so it's against the right side of your fabric. Flip the project over and tighten the screw in place, adding any stabilizer first in areas where more support is needed. Then you'll repeat to install the rest of your Chicago screws. Mark in from each corner edge of contrast piece F base according to the pattern. Where the marks intersect, snip or punch small holes approximately an eighth inch in diameter through all the layers. If you're using a rotary punch, you'll want to use the smallest hole on your punch. Attach one purse foot hardware through each punched hole by placing a washer over the prongs and bending the prongs outwards. Apply hot glue or permanent glue to help secure the hardware. Then fuse a scrap of interfacing over the prongs of the hardware to protect the lining fabric. With right sides together, align the 5 inch edges of one prepared main fabric side gusset and contrast piece F base. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Trim excess fleece or foam from the seam allowance close to the stitching without cutting through the stitches. Finger press the seam allowance towards the base, then top stitch base an eighth inch from the seam. Repeat the same process to attach the opposite 5 inch edge of the base to the remaining main fabric side gusset. Repeat the same process to attach the lining piece F base to lining piece B side gusset. This step is optional. If using a nylon zipper, top stitch across the raw short ends of the zipper to prevent the pull from sliding off of the tape. With right sides together, center a 12 inch zipper along the top edge of one main fabric piece A main panel. Attach a narrow or zipper foot to your machine to help with this section. Base the zipper in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. If you don't have either of those feet attachments, you may have to stop and move the pull out of the way as you sew. With right sides together, center one lining piece A main panel over the main fabric, sandwiching the zipper between the fabrics. Align the top edge. Sew along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Next, press the main fabric and lining away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together. Then, top stitch the main panels an eighth inch from the seam. If you want, you can stitch a second line of top stitching a quarter inch from the seam if you'd like a double stitched look. With right sides together, center the unsewn long edge of the zipper along the top edge of the remaining main fabric piece A. Baste the zipper in place with a quarter inch seam allowance. With right sides together, center the remaining lining piece A over the main fabric that was just attached, sandwiching the zipper and aligning the top edges. Sew along the top edge with a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the main fabric and lining away from the zipper so they are wrong sides together, and top stitch the main panels an eighth inch from the seam. 
Again, you can stitch a quarter inch from the seam for a double stitched look. Open the top zipper and pocket zipper at least halfway. This is what your project should look like so far with the main panels wrong sides together with your lining fabric. Fold each main panel and assembled gusset base piece in half to find the bottom centers. Mark the centers with chalk or a removable pen. Then with right sides together, center the exterior gusset along the bottom edge of one exterior main panel. Align the long edge of the exterior gusset around the bottom curves and up the sides. Use sewing clips to hold in place. Make sure your lining fabric stays out of the way. Also, there should be a measurement of space between the top short edge of the gusset and the zipper seam according to your pattern. If there isn't, align the top edges and ease in the sides and corners to fit. Use a small scissors to clip an eighth inch notches on the straight edges of the gusset to help ease around the bottom curves if needed. Sew clipped exterior pieces together with a quarter inch seam allowance, starting and stopping according to your pattern. Be careful to not sew through the lining fabric. At the beginning and end of the seam, cut a vertical line up to the last stitch, but don't cut through or past the seam. Then repeat the steps to attach the opposite long edge of the exterior gusset to remaining exterior main panel. It's easiest to sew this step with the main panel against the bed of the sewing machine. Next, you repeat the same process to attach the lining gusset to each lining main panel. But this time, you'll start sewing with a quarter inch seam allowance, a quarter inch down from the top short edge and gradually increase to either 3 8 inch or a half inch seam allowance. Then decrease your seam allowance back to a quarter inch as you reach the opposite top edge. Make sure to start and stop sewing from the top short edge just like before. Then you repeat for the opposite side of the lining just as before. Now is about the time most people start to doubt that this will actually work and turn out the way it's intended, but just trust the process. We're nearly to the end and you'll be amazed to see it all come together. Trim the lining seam allowance to a quarter inch wide. Then with right sides together, match the top short edges of the exterior and lining gusset on each side. Use sewing clips to hold in place. The clipped seam end from before will help the short edges turn out and align in place. Sew together with a quarter inch seam allowance to create the boxed top corners. Make sure to backstitch at each end. After sewing, double check that all the layers are caught in the seam. Then you repeat to box the opposite top corner. Don't be afraid to squish your bag down to sew this step. The fleece or foam will pop right back into place after sewing. Turn the bag right side out by pushing the fabric through the bottom unsewn edge of the zipper pocket lining. After turning, top stitch the opening in the pocket closed with an eighth inch seam. The next step is to make the adjustable strap. You'll need both piece C adjustable strap, two one inch swivel hooks, and one one inch slider buckle. Follow your pattern and check out our step-by-step -step tutorial on our YouTube channel for how to make an adjustable strap from faux leather or cork. After your strap is complete, you can embellish or reinforce areas of your strap with any extra Chicago screws if you'd like. Then clip each of the swivel hooks to the top O-rings of your bag. If you're using zipper pulls that have a hole in the tab, such as a donut or a circle zipper pull, you have the option to add a decorative fabric pull for a professional touch. Take one strip of fabric for your zipper pull and fold it in half matching the short ends with wrong sides up. Then thread the short ends through the hole on one zipper pull tab from the underside. Next thread the short ends through the loop and pull tight to secure. Repeat the same process to attach any remaining zipper pull tabs. These decorative zipper pulls make it easier to grab and open zipper pockets and closures. They also tie together your fabrics by adding more contrast and are a simple way to add extra flair to your final project. 
The last optional step of this pattern is to add a tassel using tassel cap hardware. All you need is a scrap of your fabric and a tassel cap. Visit our YouTube channel for a simple tutorial on how to create a tassel. I cut my fringe an eighth inch wide for a more delicate look. After your tassel is complete, you can attach it to a top O-ring of your bag. Now your very own Lauren bag is finished. Enjoy easy access to essentials from the front zipper pocket. Inside, the handy interior pockets will keep you organized while on the go. Secure the top zipper closed to keep your items safe inside. And now you'll be ready for wherever your day takes you in style. Thanks so much for sewing with me today. I hope you enjoyed this class and learned lots of tips about working with different fabrics, purse hardware, and zippers. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let us know by giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future videos. Share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato and hashtag Lauren Satchel. We'd love to see how you're using your new sophisticated bag.